of Kashmir Shaivism to attain to the state of steady wisdom of the self. Our true nature and birthright then, according to this system, is here at the, ultimate, at the level of ultimate reality. And it is a state of consciousness attainable and in which one can become established while in human form. And here all the wavering, changing states of consciousness cease. How does this happen? While the manifestation model outlines the involution of supreme consciousness, its involvement into matter, it also maps out the stages of human evolution and transformation whereby we can reach that state where we always have access to inspiration and creativity. It's here that we can finally come to a complete realization about the mysteries of the universe and including who we really are. We're afforded opportunities to traverse this upward or inward transformation because part of the nature of ultimate reality here is to double back on itself. This doubling, can, doubling back can happen in more than one way. Of course, we can, of our own intention and volition, change the direction of our perception from projecting outside most of the time to becoming focused in the inner realms through some form of psycho-spiritual practice. But because of its nature, supreme consciousness continuously creates and reabsorbs the universe back into itself at fantastically high speed, going through every transformational level each time, whether or not, and usually not, we're aware of this. We experience the vibrational levels above space and time in every one of these continuously occurring acts of universal creation as the universe and we are flashed forth and reabsorbed in virtually countless super high speed flashes called abbases, which may, by the way, have some relationship to the mysterious instantaneous appearance and disappearance of electron positron pairs in a vacuum. From a human developmental perspective, that means under the right circumstances at any point in time in the moment of transformation to the highest states of consciousness, we could remain there or at the very least change in some way. With respect to what happens to be, what appears to be predictive phenomena um, in REG research, as just described, Kashmir Shaivism posits that we transform into states of consciousness above space and time repeatedly due to the abbasas. When in the state of space and above space and time, then, we would have access to all information, whether past, present, or future. Most of the time, most of us aren't conscious of this experience. But we may not need to be conscious of it for the REGs to register these discrete events. And furthermore, by now, a large percentage of the population does some kind of a psycho-spiritual practice, whether it's meditation, prayer, contemplation. And that alone may enhance the registering of these events with the REGs. Similar reasoning could help explain remote viewing or any of the other predictive or retrospective anomalous phenomena. And Lastly, to address the nature of UFOs with this model. As I stated earlier, one of a number of the aspects of the model of manifestation is that there are perceivers at various stages of this universal manifestation. A medi the meditation master most responsible for introducing Kashmir Shaivism to the West, um, Swami Muktananda, once entered into a discussion with a UFO researcher in the mid-70s regarding this phenomena. And in part, he said this. It's true that only through spirituality and faith can you discover the truth about UFOs. UFOs do exist, and the inhabitants of higher realms do visit the Earth. They can also take on any form they choose. He went on to provide other information, including the fact that this has been happening from ancient times, that these beings from another higher plane come to do beneficial and helpful things, often to spiritually initiate people here on Earth. But people tend to be frightened and don't understand what's happening. The planes or vibrational levels referred to here are those above space-time again in this Kashmir Shaivism model and the pure creation. These higher planes also represent the higher states of consciousness of yogis who perform psycho-spiritual practices. So in closing, in order to truly understand universal reality or the reality of the universe, Kashmir Shaivism maintains that a person should attempt to attain the realization that they are one with consciousness. It would seem then that we as scientists who are searching for the truths of the universe, each in our own way, could benefit greatly by striving to attain these levels, as Kashmir Shaivism would say, that ultimately reach that level of supreme consciousness. Thank you. Uh, 
Another model uh, of the relationship between Purusha and Prakriti mm -hmm. uh, 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 comes out of the evolutionary perspective, uh, where we're uh, uh, breathing in the spirit and out the manifestation, but in, in time. And of course, with special relativity, we all have different frames of reference, but if the universe is expanding more or less evenly, then we can talk about uh, uh, time unfolding in more of a linear way. Uh, do you see any hope for an integration of Eastern and Western perspectives in, 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 in regarding this issue? I sure hope so. Actually, in all the work I do, I, I tend to want to help with the bridging, even if it's in when it has to do with complementary medicine, <laughs> I, because I think that with with the combination, there's there's going to be such a, if you will, synergy of not only development but also also I think improvement in in health and well-being, if if we can begin to pull this in. And I don't think it has to be. Um, seen as something that's not scientific. I think as we look at some of these other models, these especially the Eastern models, there are intimations of some of the things that we're discovering or continuing to discover about in physics today and in other areas. So I see a lot of hope and I personally know a number of scientists who draw both from their their personal sp psycho-spiritual um, readings and study as much as from their scientific work to get inspiration. So yeah, I, I, we could all use the inspiration to move forward with things, I think. Yeah. Just a question regarding Gnosticism. Do you connect it with, your, with what you're doing uh, regarding knowledge and the higher realms? Um, I specialize more in one in this particular area. I know a little bit about other areas, but I don't claim to be an expert. So I think there are a number, obviously, the reason there are so many paths and ways of understanding or attempting to understand the world are there's so many different types of us who are looking to understand it. So I, I see them all, including Gnosticism, as some valid ways of, of coming to these understandings. How do you go about changing a linear belief system, which is Western civilization, into a nonlinear belief system, which is Eastern civilization? And even the process in which they, obs they observe things is different than the way we observe things. They see the whole picture, we see a spot. They process mathematics differently than we do. So there is a definite cultural disadvantage. We're talking two languages that don't even seem to be on the same page. There's that's, no translation, what yeah. I'm saying. Good point, good point. I think that's why the translational work is so important. And I think there are more and more of us that are attempting to do that very thing. Not only because of the cultural differences, but the human developmental differences as well. Nobody knows exactly where any of us are with that. And I think the more we can study and learn from each other and each other's cultures, the, the broader uh, um, an area we're going to be able to come to understand. But you're right, there are many differences, and I, but I think they're overcomable, if that's a word. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maria.